Hi, how's it going guys? This is Muftar and welcome to the Chat with Muftar podcast. On this episode, I talked to Mr. Olushe Unkufurji. Mr. Unkufurji is a day trading veteran from Nigeria. He has over 13 years experience in the market. What makes Mr. Unkufurji's story different is for 13 years, he has failed for almost six of those years before finally achieving consistency in the market. On this episode, we talked about how he combined trading with his business. He also talked about emotional implications of over trading and trading without fear. His analogy on how market makers move the market was very interesting. I also enjoyed the part where he talked about type of trading strategies and how new traders can find their strategy. One of the other things that I really looked out of what we talked about was how he explained what day traders should do during the news. We did also talk about risk management and trading psychology. I'm sure you're going to enjoy it, guys. For our listeners, uh, to begin with, um, I wanted to, to ask about what you do now. Um, well, I, I understand you are combining trading with other businesses. I uh, just wanted you to give us a background of, I mean, how you combine trading with other businesses and what, what are businesses uh, that you are up to now at the moment? Yes, I've been a nice city consultant and uh, I've also published a book on the nice city. Um, it's one of the reasons why it actually helped me in this our forex thing. Uh, you know, when it comes to uh, trying to apply the high tea part of it, make it more easy for you to really understand some things that we, you know, mm-hmm. we do in this uh, forex thing. And with the background I have in ICT, it helped me to even start writing a program, a robot, a, a forex robot for this okay. uh, forex. So it, that's where. You know, I took advantage of the ICT knowledge to combine with this uh, forex thing. So basically, I specialize on web development. I have developed so many websites for so many organizations. You know, uh, wow. past and present, there are, there are lots of them. So, so wonderful, wonderful. Sir. So, th- does that come in in uh, does that come in the way of trading, or you are able to do both efficiently? Yes, of course, I will, I'm able to do both efficiently, you know, um, even the training part of it, training people in this ICT and this Forex as well, I've been able to combine it very well uh, because um, since those are the two major things I'm actually doing and I try to schedule different time for, you know, each of these uh, business uh, careers which you know I've taken up to. So um, most times when I'm doing my ICT part of it, when it comes to the web development and other things, most times I do that a lot in the evenings. You know, I do the designing of website for organization. I do that in the evening. Most times I trade in the morning till towards the evening when the market now you know. Uh, you feel that the, the activities in the market is now slowing down. At those points, then I move into my ICT part of it. And if I have to train people, I train people on the forex thing from morning towards the evening. Um, the only challenges I've had concerning this uh, training thing of the forex, I've had cost to have people from all different parts of the world that are actually interested in me training them online since they are not based in Nigeria. Uh, the only challenge I have with them is our time differences. Most time, times, yes. yes, most times you have somebody in Pakistan or you have somebody in the Vietnam who by the time it's midnight here, is, you know, <laughs> that's yeah. when it's their own afternoon yeah. and wants to train them. That has, that's the only challenge in, I've actually faced, you know, concerning the yeah. combining this forex thing and this uh, ICT thing. Minus that, I think everything is fine. Wow. Oh, okay, sir. Um. So, so let's just track it back to to your 
um, more than a decade experience in trading. Let's let's go back to when you first began. How how did you first get into trading? Yes, I was actually introduced to forex in the 2007, around May precisely, in 2007 or so. Um, I was introduced to it by a friend who is actually still in forex too to date. Mm. And he said, oh, you are an ICT person. You should be able to catch up. There's a business opportunity there's in forex that you can quickly make money very fast and mm. you become a millionaire over the night through this forex and you may not even need your ICT in again. That you just focus on this. So I said, oh, that's wonderful. So that was how we started, you know. And the mindset that it's a get-rich-quick business was what he, myself and himself, too, we both had that, look, this is something that with $100, you can turn into $3,000 within a month. And the... The unfortunate part of that mindset is that you go to overtrade the lot size. And once you do that, you cannot escape it from the market. They're going to take the money from you. You may be lucky the first, second time when you overtrade, but I can tell you that before you do it 10 times, those boys will get you. <laughs> because, because of my ICT knowledge, I still have this belief that the market makers have a software that could tell them the amount of people who are trading lot size in the market. That's my own kind of belief. And they know where to push the market to and take the money away from everybody who are, you know, who are trading lot size. Yeah. Moreover, over the years, you will discover that, look, when you're not over trading lot size, you trade without fear. Because the problem of Forex is once fear comes in, and you are trading, you are going to lose that money. Right. The emotion comes in. And that's why I tell people that all those have been trained, I said, look, you cannot afford to overtrade loss size. Fear is going to come in. Your emotion is going to be trapped. And once your emotion is trapped, you are gone. You are gone. Mm. But if you trade the manageable loss size, you feel relaxed to be in the market. And make your profit. It's it, it's it's uh, one of the ways I try to demarcate it to people is I said, look, there are two ways you could trade forex. You can either trade it as an investment that build up gradually, or you trade it as gambling that you want to turn hundred dollars to two hundred dollars on the spot. That's like gambling. But if yeah. you want to trade it as an investment, if you are trading it with the Recommended lot size, we are building the investment gradually, gradually, gradually. So it's up to you to choose which one do you want to follow. Do you want to follow the investment part by following the rules, by following the lot size recommended, or you don't want to follow the rules and do it in a gambling form? So, mm. and so I wow. can bet you That's... if you go in the gambling form, you are not going to last in this business. Very true, very true, <laughs> sir. So how, how about your friend? Your friend you, that you talked about, does he still trade? So, um, yes, he still trade. Going back to the yeah. fact that um, he, he, he brought you in with a get-rich-quick mindset. Does he, does, is he still in the market? Yes, he's still in the market because at the same time, we, we realized the fact that it's not a get-rich-quick business. We became very disciplined. True. So we're actually moving together. So we were yeah. able to say, oh, this thing is not as how we thought. These are the rules you must follow. Uh, these are the rules. These are the things you must avoid. So he too is still trading. He's even a pastor. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. So um, I, I, you, you mentioned uh, market makers uh, earlier on when you were talking. I'm sure most of the people that will listen to this um, podcast will be, um, f uh, they, they will be more of beginners. So, I mean, could you, could you please enlighten us on what or who market makers are uh, in the market? Yes. The market makers, one of the ways to classify the market makers 
are the people, the organization that has this volume in the market, that can decide or move the market to a particular direction. And that's why I tell people that with your own $100, $200, $300, $300, you cannot move the market against organizations or individuals that has over a million dollars in the market. That We call them market makers because they are the ones who can move the market. They can make the market to go in a particular direction. Although, I also have a different way, you know, when I want to joke about them, that I refer to them, I call them forex militants. Because <laughs> once, <laughs> once they come into the market and decide that we are going to make this market to buy, you, there's nothing you can do. If you are selling, you are, you are in for it. So they are going to forcefully collect your money from you. That's why I call them militants. Because the militants... By force. <laughs> <laughs> Whether you so, like it or not. <laughs> Whether you like it or not. So just make sure... You do market loss size. Make sure you have a strategy that can let you know where the market makers want to push the market to. And I've continued to say one thing. Before I finally settled down for moving average as one of my strategy and trend line, those are the two things I combined. It took me time to observe it for a very long time and saw that, look, the market makers, you can use it to detect where they want to go and where they are not going. And I will give an instance. Personal, I use moving average of 9 and 25. So easy to understand. And I discovered that when I apply that, even on the monthly, on the monthly chart, you can know when the market makers decide to change the trend that this is where we are going. Yes, the news could retrace it, but I use that to really know and give have an idea that this is what the market makers are planning to do. That's why I've actually settled down for the moving average, EMA, and then the trend line. I combined the two to give me the kind of uh, insight of what the market makers are planning. True, true. Um, we would we'll speak more about your your personal trading like later in the podcast. Uh, we'll talk about we we'll talk we we'll go deeper into your your strategy um, and how you trade and how you settled on that strategy. Um, just you know to to still continue with the the topic earlier on. Um, you mentioned you guys are now you and your friend. You guys are now very disciplined in the market. Um, could you enlighten us on some of the the steps you took to become um, very disciplined traders? Uh, I mean, since discipline is um, seems to be a very key uh, factor to to become a profitable trader, could you touch on that a little bit for us? Yes, one of the one of the aspect of the discipline in the market in this career, number one is the lot size. You cannot lot go size. against the lot size required. That's one. Number two, no matter the strategy you have, if your strategy does not set up, you are not to go to the market. Mm. You must wait for your strategy to set up. So if you are not disciplined to wait for your strategy to set up, you will jump into the market at every time, which yeah. will affect you. But if you discipline yourself and say, no, I will not go into the market until my strategy is set up, it's another form of discipline. Then the third part of it, which is also very important, is that I try to discipline myself to make sure that I'm not trading more than two currency pairs at a time, maximum. If you don't discipline yourself in that way, and you go in with so many multiples of pairs, and multiple of trades, you are going to have a problem in this business. So you need to discipline yourself that if I decide that I'm going to trade just to currency pay, even if I see other currency pay moving in a particular way, and I'm already on a trade in my chosen peers, 
I'm going to discipline myself to make sure I don't add any other peer until those other ones close profit and comes out. So if you don't discipline yourself in those three major areas, you're going to have problems in this business. Awesome, awesome. That, that's very insightful, sir. Um, so from what I heard, um, basically the discipline should be some set of rules that you have um, trading the market uh, that you follow religiously, basically. And that's that's very that's very insightful, sir. So I'm um, following your your you being disciplined and I mean starting to follow some set of rules. What what was that moment for you? When did you realize? Yes. I've, I've arrived like i've actually gotten how this thing work how when when was that how how could you describe that moment for us i've been in this business now for 13 years it took me eight years to be trading without being disciplined so it's only in the last five years i became disciplined and start trading according to the rules of this business. So I can only say it is only from the last five years I could count myself as a profitable trader after the 13 years. For eight years, I refused to be disciplined and I discovered that I was being punished financially because once you are not disciplined, you'll be punished financially on your account. So I became disciplined in the last five years and I've been able to maintain that. Wow, that's, 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 very, that's very insightful, sir. Um, so um, let's, let's talk about your, your trading now, uh, your, your personal trading now. I, I understand you are, you, are a, you are a day trader, you, meaning you, you take trades um, and probably close them by the end of the day you trade on the, the four hour and daily um, chart. Um, what, what, what is your personal, for, for somebody who wants to day trade, um, what, what, should, what, what is your, your process? What, 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 does, what does the day trading process look like? Um, how do you set up? Could you give us an insight? Yes. For people that want to go in that form of daily trading thing, I always tell them that means you have to use the one hour you know, chart. With the one hour chart, you'll be able to get trades set up almost every day. If you are going in the other one, which is four hours and daily, you may not get your setup daily, but you are guaranteed of at least two setup or three setup in a week. But if you want to go on daily basis, if you apply the moving average on on one hour chart, you will always get a treat to, to go in for on a daily basis. So one hour chart is for you if you want to be trading every day. Once it's, once it's set up on one hour, you can go in. But if you want to go on this swing trading thing and use four hours and daily, you may not get treat every day. You may not get paid every day. Hmm. And that's why I always say that the one hour chart, if you want to use that strategy for trading, I consider them as scalpers. You True. want to scalp some little detail from the market and jump out. Oh, awesome, awesome, sir. So how, how do you prepare for your typical trading? How do you prepare for your typical trading day? Do you have a process? Oh, yes, of course, they have a process. In fact, for this um, mentoring, I have some trading customized tools. And those tools is about uh, five or so, five major tools. I now divide the five major tools into three templates. The five major tools, I divided them into three templates. And I said, it is only when these three templates aligned together and are saying the same thing, that's when I could go in for a trade. I'm not talking of the scalping method now. I'm talking of if you want to really, you know, trade the four hours and daily. I have it in three templates. 
So for me to go into a particular tweet, I check the first template, look at what is saying. If you tell him it's a buy, I check the second template. If you tell him it's a buy, I check the third template. If he's telling me not yet a buy, I will not go in for the trade. Until when the three templates tells me the same thing, that's when I go in for a trade, if I don't want to scalp. But if I want to scalp, once I come on the system, I just check my moving average, the EME 9 and 25. If 9 cross 25 up on one hour, I go in to buy. Just take 20 pips and run out. If you cross it down on one hour, just take 20 pips and run out. But if I want to stay in a trade for a longer time, then I'm going to use the templates. The template one, template two, template. And in fact, the moving average, which is EME 9 and 25, is also among the templates. In fact, it's the template one on four hours, not one hour this time around. It's on four hours. Then the template two is the trend line. Then template three is the TDI, Trade Dynamic Index. That tells me. So those are the three templates I'm using if I want to trade for a longer time before as a swing trader. But if I want to take for trade for just shorter periods, then me and one hour will be the one that will have business for the day. So once I come on the system, I check in one hour. If I have a trade on one hour, I'm going for it. If I don't have it, I check my template of the other ones before I'm going for a trade. Very, very well, sir. Thank you very much. That's very, um, that's very, very well uh, insightful. Um, you, you talked about um, you going in for, um, for 20 pips and the rest. Um, and you also talked about you um, waiting for a couple of templates you have before, before you go into the trade. Um, those templates are they available to everyone? As do, 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 do people know the kind of templates you are talking about? Yes. What I've done is this. The, like I said, I have some people I'm mentoring when I actually have a mentorship yes. group. So everybody in that mentorship group, I give them all my trading tools, which they will be able to use to analyze the market, the same way I'm saying now. So almost everybody in my mentorship group can analyze the market the way I'm saying it now. In fact, the, most of the time, I may not know of a particular setup in a particular currency pair. Somebody will just announce in the group and say, oh, we have a setup on the three templates. Like on Friday, somebody told us and said, there's a setup on our uh, three templates, um, Swiss franc JPY, that are set up, we can start selling. So sometimes, fears that I didn't notice that they are set up, those in the mentorship group that have mentored and trained will raise an alert and said, oh, I'm watching this particular currency pay it has set up. Let everybody go in for it. And then we all go in for it. Wow. Uh, I'm sure I'm sure your, your students are having a very good time uh, being mentored. Oh, yes. Uh, oh, yes, oh, yes. yes. Yeah. So, um, sir, do, do you look out for any sort of price action apart from the template? Do you look out for any sort of price action before getting to the market? Uh, does price action play a huge part in your, your trading? Yes, price action play a huge part, but personally, I discovered that those my templates follow the direction of the price action, if you want to use that strategy. That those my templates, especially when you talk of trend line, it yes. follows that pattern. And that's why I use trend line as my template too, which is very, very key. Once it's set up on that daily chart, the trend line, you cannot afford to go against it. Mm. So, but I'm not using just price action as a loan. What I discovered that, look, what my three templates are doing is actually what price action strategy is saying. So I said, okay, I'm more comfortable with these three because if you talk of the price action, it's like using it as a single template. But why I'm still combining other templates to really give me, like I always tell my student, I said, why we are waiting for these ten three templates to set up is to give us more probability of a successful trade. 
that the more the three tenders set up, the more the probability you are going to win the trade you are going in for. But if you don't allow the three templates to set up, your probability of winning that trade is slim. Yes. So that's why the combination of all the three templates, once they agree, you, so, you have more probability of winning the trade. So so basically, if you have a system, if you have a system, like you said, you need to wait for confirmation from two or more of those systems to, to mm -hmm. easily confirm give you an mm -hmm. edge in the market mm -hmm. okay that's 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 very sad to say um so so um how do you know you are because right now most traders um we most it's easy to to click on the buy click on the sell to enter the market after you've discovered what works for you where, where you enter what what determines how wrong you are in the market what, what tells you are wrong how do you know you are wrong in the market? Now, like I, always, I also teach my students about pivot points, that even when the three templates are set up, you now use the pivot points to guide your entry and exit. If the three template says it's a buy, you go and check your pivot points. I tell them you buy from support to resistant one if the template says it's a buy. So I told them that look, buying from support one to resistant one means you are buying low. And vice versa, it means you are selling from high, which is one of the yeah. strategy in Forex that is good you buy from low. So that when price goes up, you're able to make profit. And it's good to sell from high. When price goes down, you'll be able to make profit. Now, when you're not going at that particular time, and instead of price going into to the resistance point where you want to come out, rather it went deeper from support one to support three, then you have to come out. Something has gone wrong. That's when I know that, look, I must come out. Because instead of you to move from support one to resistant one, if it's a buy trend, it rather breaks the support one, breaks support two, breaks support three. Then something has gone wrong. You have to leave the market. So, so immediately when price moves from, let's say you buy the euro at one point zero two, and you, I mean you, you at least wanted to go up to a, at around one point zero five for. For narration sake so as soon as price moves to 1.01 .01, you close the trade exactly because so do you I, I advise you must have a stop loss you cannot afford to trade in this business without stop loss because if you if you i tell people or from my experience i saw that certain events could happen in the world that could change even the setup you have created that you discover was correct take for instance so i'm going to use an example if during the what's called this us 9 11 bombing thing if your trade setup before that bombing was a buy and that event, that sudden event, turns the market upside down. You have to come out. And that's why I'm saying that even when you have a good setup, a sudden event could change that technical analysis to the opposite side. That is why you cannot afford not to have stop loss. Mm. So that the stop loss will really cut you off and you won't be able to lose all your capital. And since you have a strategy, a winning strategy, you will be able to recover the money back and then move into the profit part of it. True, true. So um, what, what informs um, your stop loss? I mean, for a new trader, I mean, uh, if I would want to buy at, let's say, 1.01, .01, do I just put um, my stop loss at 1.02? Do you have any conditions to put your, or do you just put your stop loss somewhere, 
you, you can put in the market? Are there any conditions no, 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 for no, no, no. placing no, your stop like loss? I don't do that. Actually, what I always suggest is if you are going to the, like we all know, daily pivot points changes. It's not the same price every day. And that's why it's important that before you go into the market every day, you must check your daily pivot points since it's not the same price every day. So you must have your daily pivot points by your side before you go into the market. Now, what I tell, which I'm also using is that if you go into the market, that's assuming the pivot point says you can go into the market at 1.2, which is from S1. And your S3 is 1.1. I always tell my student, which is a single way I'm trading, that no matter the stop loss you want to use, don't let it go beyond 50 pips. Don't let it go beyond 50 pips. Even if the pivot point is showing something that if S3 is showing almost 100 pips away, you can't afford to wait till that point because it may go more than that. So to place it, your entry point, you must not have more than 50 pips maximum as a stop loss. So you know that once I enter a trade, I'm risking 50 pips. Like I always say, you must predetermine how much you are willing to lose for every trade you want to go into. But you correspond it and see where does it stand on the pivot point. No matter where you stand on the pivot point, you must make sure that you don't go beyond that 50 pips so that it will be easy to recover back. Yeah. And for any trade you set up, you claim is okay, and you go in and it doesn't go to your take profit and still go back by 50 pips, then you have not really get a very good setup. A very good setup, once you go in, it's supposed to move to the direction you're expecting it to go. If you decide to return back again for that 50 pips, it's risky for you to allow it to drag you down more than that. Great, 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 sir. So yes, um, just to clarify on, on what you said, um, Usually, you say you have a predetermined um, price where you you exit even before you enter, before you click on your buy or sell. You already know beforehand mm -hmm. where you are going to exit in a loss if that happens mm -hmm. in the market. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great, great, great. What most we find ourselves most of the new traders try to you know they enter impulsively and they don't have plans before they enter the market they don't have a, an exit point in a loss mm -hmm. when they are going out they only do that after or when they are inside they are already mm -hmm. in the trade it's not the best you must have a predetermined amount of pips you are ready to risk anything beyond that you must leave the market true so, sir, do you do you um, use because there are, there are different type of stop losses. Some people uh, believe you have to have psychological stop loss. Do you put your stop loss there physically, or you you say, okay, let's let's let me see if it gets there, then I close it. What is no, your, no, no, no. your how do you play? It? Once I'm going into the market and I want to click on buy, in most cases I always set a pending order. If I want to set the pending order, I'll set the pending order with the stop loss at the same time and the take profit at the same time. But for any reason, if I just get to the system and I swear that it, it, my strategy has set up and I want to quickly go in so that I don't miss the opportunity, the moment I click on the buy thing, instantly I'll set my stop loss. Mm, I'll make sure that, I always make sure that I have determined what I want to risk for this trade I'm going in. Wow. So so sir, um, now you are you are very you are you are a profitable trader. You are doing well. And what are the, the challenges you face um uh, as as uh, a consistent profitable trader now? What are some of the challenges you face since you've passed the, the stage of the 
the beginners? What are, what are some of the challenges uh, that you yes. encounter? One of the major challenges I could say I've, I'm facing, you know, which I believe uh, gradually almost overcoming it, has been that ever since I became so disciplined and I discovered a lot of my activities in this trading, ICT business and otherwise, it was one of the things that now initiated the idea in my mind and said, okay, there are times that my strategy will have set up and I will not be available at that time to go into the market. That why don't I come up with an EA robot? That whether I'm there or not, it will be the one, once you see the strategy set up, it will be the one going into the market and coming out with predetermined stop loss. Now, in the process of doing that, I've had some challenges because I try to make sure that I even put it on a live account. Because the emotions you have when you are on a demo account is different from the emotions you have on a live account. I put it on a live account fine tuning it on that life account, but with a very small lot size, one cent, two cent, three cent. So my challenges has actually been more in the area of perfecting my robot to actually treat according to what I wanted to do. You know, I've had challenges in that area where I make changes, I change the settings, I change the programming. That has been my major because, just like I said, because of a lot of activities I'm having on my hand, I discovered that I need a robot to be trading my strategy when I'm not there. And that robot has really been a lot of challenge for me, which I'm gradually overcoming bit by bit. <laughs> but like I said, I decided to put it on a live account so that I could get the emotions that you oh. get on a live account that's against the demo account. Wow, wow, very awesome. Um, I, I, I'd like us to speak more about the, the, the um, EAs and the robots you use, uh, hopefully um, later during the podcast. Um, could you, this might sound a little bit um, uh, interesting or intrusive, however you want to, um, you may put it. Um, can you um, tell us some of the the biggest mistakes you made? Can you narrate maybe one of the biggest mistakes you made um, during trading? One 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 moment where you say, "Okay, I'm sure I'm not going to do that again," or one that you remember very fondly. <laughs> yes, when it comes to this uh, business, there is always cause for once in a while you could make a mistake. There's no doubt about that. You can't I've had some traders saying, does this thing have some spiritual <laughs> you know <laughs> that somebody will say that immediately I enter into the trade, it's just when it against me, I buy, I lose, I sell, I lose <laughs> that he doesn't believe in this at forex thing. Now one major mistake which I discovered that I've been able to actually make in this uh, business. It has some little, um, it's a little bit related to this my year as well, because what happened was I decided to say, okay, let me trade this Martin Gay uh, the strategy where you don't use stop loss and then when trade goes against you by maybe 50 pips, you double your lot size. It goes against you more, you double the lot size. There was an EA I wrote then, which I was doubling the lot size. The EA was doubling, was doubling, was doubling. I decided that you could not recover out of that. And I said, oh my God, for someone like me to allow to program an EA in this format. No, 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 no. It's a major error on my part. <laughs> and I wow. remember... The one that was so that 
it's quite recent. It's all this Brexit thing. When my EA did that doubles was actually buying Euro Great Britain. And wow. all of a sudden, when the news came out, it went down by almost 400 piece. The year wow. was multiplying, it was multiplying, it was multiplying. It got to a point that wow. I said, no, <laughs> this is an error. <laughs> <laughs> I had to cancel that particular year and said, no, I won't go in this format. No, 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 no. And they started another EA that would be for lot size. So, like I can say, that was a major error on my part, you know, using an EA that multiplies <clears throat> lot size. And before you know it, you have now traded more than the required lot size in the cost of the multiplication of that, you know. So, it's a major thing that, major error I will never forget when it comes to this uh, uh, business. And I have not advised anybody to trade that kind of strategy, whether manually or through the, you know, don't yes. try it. <laughs> yes. um, because most most people come come um, across that strategy. I'm sure um, those of us that have been trading for a while know the Martingale strategy, where you double down your lot size when when I mean the trade goes against you. I, I think it's it's not very advisable um, to to carry on. Uh, <laughs> so so um, for, for somebody who has gone through that um, that, that um, process of loss at that time, um, it, to be hard, new traders coming to the market, they, they find a hard time. You know, they, they go through one or two very huge losses and, and they don't find the strength to continue. Where, where did you, how did you cope with that? How did you cope with it? And I mean, later on, you still came back um, and continue trading, being consistent. Yes, one of the one of the things that actually helped me in this uh, forex thing is I sat down and discovered that look and convinced myself from experience that if you break the rule, you are going to be punished. But when I don't break the rule, I'm not being punished. So anytime I have a decision like that, by the time I check the rules of this business, I saw that I've broken a rule. So, I know that it is because I broke a rule, that is why I found myself in that loss. So, I must stop from that road and follow the rules. But for anybody who is not conscious of the fact that, look, there are some rules you must not disobey in this business. And you make it, you know, some losses like that. You may not have the strength to continue. But... If you are somebody who knows that these are the rules of this business, and I was the one that broke it, then I know that as I'm going back, I must not break it again so that I can recover my loss. So it now depends on somebody who is conscious of the rules of this business and have it written down that, look, these are the rules I must not break. Once I break it, I'll be sent back in. A lot of people who does not, who are new traders, are not conscious of the fact that there are some rules they cannot break in this business. They have no strategy, they have no discipline, they go in, they lose money, they get discouraged, they lose for the first time. They are not conscious of the error they made that they broke a rule. They go in the second time, fund the game, still make the same error, lose money, still make the same error, lose money, until you sit down and say, look, this business has some rules and regulation. And these are the rules I must not break. If I break it, I'll be punished. So that's what has kept me going, knowing the fact that, look, there are some rules I must not break. If I break, I'll lose some money. And it's, it's, not, uh, it's not the best way. So, so over time, you, you decided to write them down and, I mean, um, make sure you don't go back to those um, to those particular mistakes anymore and improve on them. Um, awesome, awesome, sir. I'm talking about strategy. I mean, for a new trader who comes into the market, I mean, there are a lot of things out there. Everybody says, oh, this is perfect. This one, if you do this, it's going to make you a lot of money. If you do that, it's going to make you a lot of money. And uh, what... 
after finding your strategy how how would you advise a new trader to to look for something that works for them how how can they find a strategy honest what i see anybody even requesting that what strategy can they use is a new bid the first thing i tell you is go and then trend line at moving average once you learn those two the trend line the moving average and you combine it even when the experience is not yet much if you follow those two tools you will discover that your losses will not be as when you don't have any strategy at all that's why i advise any new bid that look make sure that trend line analysis and moving average is among the tools you are going to learn even if you want to learn other tools but make sure that those two you must not remove them the trend line analysis and the yeah, we must not remove them. That's a new bid. You must not. You must not. You may learn other strategies to use to, for confirmation, or, but those two, yeah, the market they are key. They are key. always obey it. They always obey it. Awesome. Awesome, sir. Um, um, just to, to, to refresh the, um, the atmosphere a little bit, you talked uh, to us about your your biggest one of your biggest mistakes or a couple. How about your biggest win? Do you have do you have a memorable win in mind you want to share? With us, uh, Come again. One, Sorry, one, I didn't get that. You have a memorable win. Something one of one of the very good trades that that you remember fondly. No. <laughs> Is this Brexit thing when? the first voted to uh, that great meeting first voted that they were going to leave the eu it was a memorable one because it happened at midnight and market went close to close to 1000 pips on that day hmm. and i was just following it wow and i was just following it and I was just following it. It was a wholesome one <laughs> that if if you think that is how forex is every day, <laughs> you will see it as a get rich quick business. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. it doesn't happen every day. It happens once a while, you know. Yeah. The very first time they voted to leave the EU, the market went close to 1,000 people started. It was, nice. It was safe. It was safe. Nice. <laughs> so, I really, I really um, like the fact that you said this is not how it is every day because most people come in with that mindset. And and to talk about what we you said on on strategies, um, we, once you get a strategy, does that mean you 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 win every day? Does that mean um, that is how your strategy is going to be? Once you pick a trade, it's going to win. How, how how should newbies approach a strategy? What should they think um, about a strategy? What what sort of things should they have in mind yes. about a strategy? Realistic. I always, I always try to make my students realize that, look, there's no 100% perfect strategy in Forex. If anybody tells you he has an 100% perfect strategy, he's not being sincere. But you must make sure that the strategy you're using has more winnings than your losses. Whereby, by the time you do plus and minus, you will be in profit. So, if you look at it from that angle, that does not make my strategy 100% perfect. Once in a while, there could be one or two losses. But because it's a good strategy, it's easy to recover one or two losses since it's a strategy that has more winnings than losses. And that's why I tell people that, look, when you are using a strategy and it has more losses than winning, they need to change that strategy. But the moment you have a strategy that has more winnings than losses, it's like a balance sheet. There always be losses and then two. So, 
By the time you do plus and minus, you must be in profit. Then that's a strategy you can still continue to be with. So my strategy is not that 100% perfect. There's nothing is perfect in this world. <laughs> you know, there's not any human being is doing that can be 100% perfect. But at least we know we'll score very above average and we'll still be able to be in profit. Wow. So very, the mindset very by anybody that you can get a strategy that will be 100% perfect, that you will not have one or two losses uh, as a new page, you must not have that in mind. Great, 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 sir. So we, we should approach uh, market, the market uh, with our strategies in mind. Um, strategies that, that have um, very good win to loss ratios. You are going to make losses, but what counts are uh, what counts are, are the good trades over the bad trades? Good, 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 sir. Um, so um, let's talk a little bit about um, day trading um, and, and the news in day trading because, I mean, news breaks happen during the day, you know, um, Europe, the European market, the U.S. market, the, the U.K. market. Um, while while day trading does does the news affect your trading? How how do you do you um, maneuver the the news in your trading? How how do you work with it in your trading? Does it affect it? Yes, for the news, I saw that with my strategy, sixty percent. When I compare when the news comes out, sixty percent, I will say that. The market went according to my strategy, even when when the news came out. That by 60%, my strategy, once the news comes out, it goes in the direction of my technical analysis with my strategy. While 40%, my strategy may say this, the news take it the other way around. So, but I always use a different strategy if I actually wanted to treat news for a very short time if there's going to be a spike that 20 seconds to the news i will set a pending order both buy and sell so 10 pips or 15 pips away from the current market price so if there's a spike it will pick one and go very far while i quickly hit it the other one that's basically i want to trade news and not using my technical analysis to trade news. But if I actually want to use my technical analysis to trade news, I will not do that. I will just wait for the market to obey what the technical analysis has, is saying. And like I said, 60% of the period of time that the news has come out went in my favor according to my technical analysis, while 40% went the other way around. You know, more. Personally, I don't feel too comfortable about this new trading thing because most brokers out there don't like people trading news per se. For instance, the broker I'm using, if you trade news and you come out of that trade less than five minutes, if you don't stay in that trade up to five minutes, they will not pay you. Wow. And I understand why the brokers are saying that. Because the brokers depend on commission. Once you go into the trade, the spread is where they get their commission. So they are saying that, look, if you just come in today, make $300, and they only get payment of one commission of that spread, just one spread, they want somebody Oh, before you could make $300, you come into the trade almost about 50 times or 20 times, where they'll collect the spread in 20 places before they give you that money. But if you just want to take a lump sum and just want to give the broker just a single spread, which is a single entry, yeah. the front and the at it. So I understand why some of them are saying that, look, if you are trading news with us, you cannot close that trade if it's not up to five minutes. If you close it before five minutes, we are not going to pay you. They believe that 
once you can see the market for five minutes and market is still in your favor, then there's no more in new street. That's sold to technical. So they always frown at this news trading thing. Very few brokers work, you know, don't complain. But majority of them complain. Good, good. Um, so for for somebody who who is a uh, is is day trading, uh, so would you say they should they should try and who, who trades basically technical analysis um just price action? Would you say because usually people say hey, don't when the news is coming out don't I mean when the economic release is coming out don't trade at that time. For a technical analysis person who doesn't really care about the news, but as they traders, who who's, um, the news usually comes during the time that they trade. What do you advise them to do? Do they stay in the market during the news? I mean, do, would they affect their trading? And or how, how should they go about it? Or should they just go by doing whatever they are they are doing and don't don't mind the news? Now, just like we all know that there are so many strategies to use to trade in this forex market. What I'm going to advise anybody who has an open trade before the news is this. If your strategy over time, if you go into the market with a technical analysis and you have not come out before the news comes out, if you go into the market like that and for you, some period of time, series of news, you discover that every time the news meets in the market, it always goes against you. It tells you something that your own strategy, the tools you are using to analyze the market, is not in favor of the news. So my advice is you must stop trading news. Like I told you now that my own strategy has given me 60% winnings even when the news came out. So if you don't have that kind of winnings when the news came out that the technical analysis fell to the same part of the news direction, then it is advisable you don't be in the market when the news is coming. Then the news goes before you come in. So it means that your strategy is not news friendly. It's not news friendly. But if you have a strategy that is news friendly and gives you more winnings than losses, then you should stay in the market and wait for it. Awesome. Awesome. So so you should you, you are basically saying you should um observe your strategy over the a long sample size to tell if it's actually okay for you to stay in the news in the market during the news. Uh, if it doesn't work that way, you should just um, look for something else or stay out of the news, basically. That's exactly. what I, I, I like that. Um, one of the final topics uh, would, would, uh, is um, risk management. You know, there, there are a lot of definitions of risk management. A lot of <laughs> people say different things about risk management. Um, I, I wanted to know your your view. What is your definition of risk management uh, trading? Yes. What is risk management? When you talk of risk management, especially in the context of this uh, forex, we are talking about a situation where the account balance you have in the market, in your account, and you want to go into the trade into a particular trade. What is the percentage you are risking at any particular point in time as against the balance you have in your, for, in your Forex account? Take for instance, you have an $100 balance in your account and you want to go into the market to either buy a particular currency pair. What is the percentage you are taking out of that $100 into the market? to risk if something goes wrong. There are people that go into the market and risk 90% out of that $100. And if something goes wrong, they lose all their money. That person is not doing proper risk management. But if you have $100 and 
and we are now going to the market to reach just probably 5% of it. Then you are following the proper risk management, whereby if anything goes wrong with that 5%, it is just 5% of your capital you are going to lose. Mm. You have a balance of 95%. So the problem everybody has been having, which relates to when I too first joined Forex was when I had $100, I was not doing proper risk management. I was going to the market with 90% of my account balance to buy a particular currency pay. And when something goes wrong, I will lose all the money. But a proper risk management, which I always recommend that if you want to say, I want to trade it proper in a proper way and risk reasonably. I always tell people that you should not go into the market more than 5% of your capital mm. at any point in time. So that if anything goes wrong, it will be easy for you to recover that 5%. But the moment you don't use that proper risk management and you go into the market with about 90% of your capital and something goes wrong and you lose all the money, you lose all the money because you did not do the proper risk management. You have decided to go on a level that ignore the risk management rule that mm. you must not risk more than certain percentage that if you lose it, it will be easy for you to recover. So I always recommend a maximum of 5% at any point in time out of your capital that you should take to the market and leave the balance of 95%. Right, right, right. That's, that's very good, sir. I, I, I totally love that. Um, because most people go into the market just um, for the sake of getting in. So it's, it's advisable, like you said, to to trade. Um, so, um, so do you do you have um, some some risk management rules yourself that you that you apply in your trading? Yes, of course, I have. At the beginning of this uh, discussion, I mentioned about the fact that I don't trade more than two currency pairs at a time. Is it part of the risk management? Because I've just mentioned five percent now. So if I want to trade two currency P at a time, I'm going to divide that five percent into two, so that I'm not going to the market with a single currency P of five percent and still going with another one. But if I know that I want to stay on one currency P, then I can go with the five percent. But if I want to go on two currency P, then I'm going to divide that five percent into two point five, two point five. So I have that as my own rule of the risk management. That is one of the errors a lot of new bids make. They will tell you that you said I should just trade five percent of it, but you you went into the market with about six different trades or seven different trades. When you multiply five percent of each one times seven into seven, it gives you more than that. So you've broken the rule. Mm, so that's true. On my own part. If I'm going to trade two currency pairs at the time, I'm going to divide the 5% to 2.5 to 0.5. If I'm going to trade the one, then I can go in with the 5% of it on just one single one. So that's a real life plan. Thank you. Thanks. Yes. Yes. Thank, thank you very much uh, for that. So new traders should have um, a set of um, risk management percentage where they they are able to, to um, apportion the number of trades inside those risk uh, management parameters. So like you said, if it's 5% and they're going to take four trades, they make sure that they go into it with um, um, 5% in total. Everything shouldn't exceed 5% in losses exactly. in case that happens. Exactly. Very well, very, very good. Sir. Um, so this, this question might, I mean, might sound... Um, a little bit um, off, but you know, most traders, most of us are, are, are not very well capitalized. But when you say 5%, for somebody who has $100, um, most people even open an account with $10. Some open accounts with 
for for someone who has a hundred dollars account, five percent is um um I think five dollars if I'm if That's I correct. so so I mean for 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 a five dollar stop loss in um in let's say the pound the pound USD it might be very very um expensive to trade because of the amount per pip. So what would you advise um newbies who have very small capital um how, how should they approach their trading i always say one thing that for newbies who have small capital especially when your capital is below 25 dollars once it's below that even below 50 dollars Always go and open a cent account. Never open a standard account. That is where the problem is. If you open a cent account, it will be easy for you to trade one cent. But if you open a standard account, you will not be able to trade one cent. So anybody who is going into the market with a very small capital, don't even move near the standard account. Just go straight to the cent account where you can afford to trade the lowest and the lowest you can trade in the cent account is one cent per pip, mm. which is what I would recommend you should go for, since that is the lowest you can trade in the cent account. But yes. you cannot get one cent in the standard account. Oh, oh very, that's very, that's very, very well said, sir. I really like that. Um, now let's let's let's. Let's talk about trading, the trading psychology, the psychological part of, of trading, uh, because people seem to overlook the, the trading psychology part um, and how psychology affects uh, how we trade. Um, how important is trading psychology to your, your how important is, is a sound um, mind, sound trading mind to your, to your personal trading? Yes, the psychology. But psychological part of it is very, very important in this business to every trader because it's the part that brings in emotions. And once you are trapped emotionally, you are gone in this business. Mm -hmm. I always tell people that don't over trade loss size, trade the recommended loss size. That's one. Number two, the capital you are taking into the market, make sure that it's not a borrowed money from the bank that comes with interest. Because once you go to the bank and borrow money to trade Forex, and there's an interest on it, psychologically, as you are coming to the market, you are already trapped emotionally because of the fact that you'll be thinking of how you're going to pay the bank with the interest. So it's going to affect you in your lot size. You are going to be tempted to over trade lot size, and that is going to be a lot of problem. So in my own case, I'm not borrowing money from the bank to trade. Number two, I'm not over trading lot size. Number three, I'm not trading more than two currency pairs at a time because the moment you trade about ten currency pairs, the moment you trade about trade about ten currency pairs. Each piece is going to give you some psychological problem. If all the 10 pieces goes wrong, you're going to have a lot of psychological problem because you start getting worried by the drawdown if it's not going in your favor. So one of the ways to also beat that in the market is don't trade more than two pieces. Don't no open more than two currency pairs at a time. Mm. It will help your psychology. It will help your emotions. Because the emotions you are going to use to monitor 10 currency pairs is not the same emotion or psychology you are going to use to monitor two currency pairs. It's not the same. Yes. That's very good, sir. So, I mean, um, so final words, uh, final words, because uh, for, for people who want to follow in your day, 
trading footsteps. Um, your, what are your final advices? Um, what's your final advice for for people who want to follow your day trading footsteps and advice for new traders um, coming up? My advice, which does not change, is that you must not over trade loss size. You must not trade more than two currency p at a time. You must not open multiple trades. Once you are prepared to discipline yourself and have a strategy, then come in. If you cannot discipline yourself and apply by those rules, don't move near this market. It is very volatile. Mm. It doesn't pardon. <laughs> if you make errors, yeah. it doesn't pardon. <laughs> Wow. So my advice awesome, is awesome, people awesome, should awesome, keep sir. to that and then you are good to go. Awesome, awesome, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, sir, for, for agreeing to do this uh, podcast. You're welcome. Um, and uh, and uh, hopefully we'll have more. I, I'd like to talk more about your EA in the next uh, podcast we have. So hopefully we'll, we'll do that, sir. Thank you so much for, for doing this. You're welcome. Thanks so All much. All right, sir. Take care, sir. All right. Okay. All right. Bye. Cheers.